I have kept on um, Town Hall Maintenance Portico because um, it goes along with um, Roman 2 below a 2018 revised budget. Um, Caroline told me that um, you have agreed, I should say, uh, to sit down with her to revise the, the, the spreadsheet that we work off of to, um, to show where we move things around. Yeah, maybe so Friday. There may be. There may still be some available funds to get it done, but I, um, I, I don't want to start calling, we're running out of time quickly, but I don't want to start calling contractors getting quotes for something that may not happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair to them to put time into putting together um, um, quotes that may not materialize, so I do recognize that we're running out of building season, so. Talked about revised budget, uh, budget planning. Those are um, staying on the admin support as a placeholder. Uh, budget spreadsheet management. We had um, so we need to figure out who is going to have the authority to edit the master spreadsheet. And in the past, we've only had one person allowed to edit the master sheet, so there are not yeah. <laughs> issues about getting spreadsheets out there. Mm -hmm. Do we want that to fall? I, I'm not trying to dump it on you, but uh, Denise, as the budget committee rep, do we want it to fall on Caroline as a staff member, or it could be either any one, either of us. I mean, we can make a reason for why we're doing it. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at both of you. I, mean, I, I don't. I think it, it makes sense for the, the rep that's on to the budget committee. Again, I don't want I don't want to shove that on you, but no, it I just agree. kind of goes yeah. along. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Okay. So I will let um, Caroline know that she needs to um, uh, grant that authority. Now it may be actually that a staff member and you could have the authority just in case. We as long as someone. It, 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 it could be Caroline and I, as long as Caroline tells me what she's doing. Well, if she's authorized to do it. Off, you know, that's, that's what I mean. Like, so you, know, you, ha for some, you have to have you're, ten people doing things and not telling you. You get the flu or something. Yeah. You know, Someone's going to have it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, there needs to be that redundancy there. So, but, but you will be the main person. Yeah. That way I can't screw it up. Perfect. That makes me feel better. Um, the timeline is on there. We're going to go over that on on Saturday during part of our budget workshop. I want us to map out where, what the coming months look like, mm -hmm. and working with the budget committee mm -hmm. to have um, public hearings and all that. Um, and then we have their workshop as well and to make sure we, we make the, um, remember we set the deliberative date session for February 2nd. So that was the the night? Yeah, I'm sorry. It was so they were thinking about doing it on the fifth, so yeah. but they didn't have pushed it back. Okay, thank goodness. Are there other upcoming dates in the immediate future? Because I, I didn't know about Saturday until. Oh, sorry. It's okay. The, the most immediate thing is Saturday. Okay. But then we're going to set from Saturday, set our, our no schedule. There is nothing on schedule. How much we can get done on Saturday? Yeah, and we're, there will be a few that we have to do. Yep. Um, budget season is the, is the busiest time of uh, of the year for a for the select board. Uh, so we're probably doing about 150 instead of I don't know 90, which would be most of the year. But it slows down to about 60 in the middle of the summer. But um, uh, time on to talk about coordinating with the budget committee junkyard. Now there's we have made inquiry to legal inquiries at the municipal association, and working with our our own code enforcement officer, there has been a complaint about actually there's been several complaints about um, towing at all hours of the day and night oh. uh, at um, Day's Junkyard. That's the second business that mm -hmm. Correct. So apparently, lo and behold, when, um, when um, the junkyard was approved the first time, it was, um, towing was supposed to happen at, in concert with the junkyard, so it was during <laughs> normal business hours. The new owner, um, not so new anymore, but the newer, the most recent owner, um, has decided to um, ex 
expand this towing business to serve not just the junkyard, but in general, towing services, which was never um, never approved through the site plan process. Because uh, it's, it's a grandfathered use. It's not actually a, an approved use out there. So, um, zoning. So, um, because there has been a complaint, um, legal inquiries has um, informed us that really you need to have a public hearing uh, on that complaint and let um, let the uh, if you're going to move forward with the application, let the applicant know that um, as a condition of approval that he would he or she in case he would need to go through um, a site plan review for the planning board for the second business that was never authorized. Um, so what we had to decide tonight is whether or not we wanted to go through that process. I can't. I, I couldn't begin to understand why we wouldn't follow <laughs> the legal procedure, but I, the case could remain, I guess. But so I, I would suggest that we need to um, inform the, the junkyard owner that we're going to that was been a complaint and that we're going to have to go through that process and outline it for him, um, just as they did legal inquiries just in that email that we got back, citing the RSAs and how the process works. You stopped the wrong email, right? Yes. So that's so the other part of this question. There's a concern. Yes. Whenever you bring a legal action like this, or, or bring something like this, there's always the concern that there will be legal dollars associated with it. Mm -hmm. um, it just has, um, this is always a concern. So I don't want to scare people off. The, what the question is, is whether or not the existing budget will be able to absorb some of those additional um, legal expenses. And so, this is what I'm going to suggest. <laughs> He's already operating under an expired um, permit. What I would suggest, and I think what would probably make me feel the most comfortable, is that we table this for the week. You meet with Caroline on Thursday or Friday, whatever it is, the day that works for your schedule. And we look at the existing budget, where we have moved things, make sure they're all working off the same spreadsheet, then we can reassess whether or not we think that we can have, we have money left in the professional services line that could cover. I mean, this could be, there could be no legal dollars attached to this. I mean, they, they, you, in best case scenario, worst case scenario, there could be multiple thousands associated with it. So, this is something that we need to determine whether or not we want to move forward. What are the implications of they're being allowed to run this business without a permit? Um, I've been thinking about that myself, actually. And I have not asked uh, Mr. Clark or Lee Boyne Corbis because I did, just worked on this today. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Certainly, certainly there is no... Um, there's no sort of statute of limitations on when the town can, can bring action. So, kind of, kind of like, um, um, what's the term I'm thinking of? Adverse. Basically, the, you've allowed people, I think there's a <coughs> called adverse, I can't think of the other word, but you let someone use a, a cut through on your property, right? Mm -hmm. And so, after a number of years, it becomes becomes a public easement because you've allowed it to. That doesn't hold true for the towns. We, we're protected under certain things like that. So just because there is no statute of limitations as far as I, I know from what legal inquiry told us to even bring action to this point because he's been operating for, I don't, I don't even know how long he's been there now. He's been there for quite a while, at least, what, at least 10 years, right, that he's been there operating it? I Maybe mean, more than that, actually. So their, their suggestion, other we can still go forward, because they never went through that process and didn't get permission from the town to add that, that, new, um, that new business. It's much like up on Clement Road, where we've got a compound up there of, of, of apartments and, and, and barns and in garages, and then all, all of a sudden attached to that, next to that, there's a, 
an old snowmobile repair shop that now somehow is an automotive repair shop that never went through the process either, which is the, the biggest well, band of my existence on the board, but we have not found the legal dollars to solve that problem yet either. But I'm hoping before I leave we can solve that, but never know. So, um, how, where does the state fall in? Because clearly there are some violations. Oh, the junkyard permit. Yeah, yes. yeah that, that's what we're talking about, right? Yes. Well, right. yes. Okay. Yes, but well, it's, it's sort of a two-part thing now, because uh, because of the via the the, um, the complaint about the unauthorized business that's also operating in the permitted business. His license is on hold. We're not allowed to issue the license until we resolve the other piece, is what legal inquiries told us. But, again, what is the state doing about some regulation issues with uh, the business that has the permit? So, so DES, sorry, I haven't finished my thought, I'm sorry. DES, uh, Department of Environmental Services, has cited the owner of, of this facility. Um, for being in non-compliance on a number of issues, mm -hmm. um, and has been working with the owner and Tom to make sure that those issues are resolved. There's still that process is still ongoing. Okay. So is that enough for him not to get his permit? Those other pieces, yes. oh, in my mind, yes. We could, should, if, we, if he doesn't, if he's still in violation of those environmental codes, mm -hmm. then I would say that we would deny the permit. I mean, we wouldn't lose the permit. I mean, if he's, um, Do you know what those violations are? I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So before you get here, I'm sorry. These are multi-year issues. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So this is also why something it might be nice to have staff that outlives the, the boards, right? As we all change. Um, last year, I believe, I believe it was last year. Um, could have been even the summer before. Um, we received a letter with pictures uh, from DES uh, addressed to the owner of the, of the, of the junkyard and outlying oh, I remember, like, four or five, six different violations. Mm -hmm. um, and we all went home oh, and sat up and took notice because we had just been, we'd go over and we'd take a look, but, and then we would sign up and send Tom over once we had him more um, in the ways availability to came to the town. Um, he would go over and look, but there's only so much, he could only look at what was on, um, he was only looking at what the list of um, conditions were the town set out mm -hmm. back when, I don't remember what year it was, I think it was like, I don't remember, um, when he took over. Um, and he was always not always in compliance with those, and we would hold him accountable and say we're not going to, and he would do a little bit of clean up, and he would do just enough to to get the, the permit we did. Mm -hmm. um, then DEF got involved, unbeknownst to us, every once in a while they do compliance checks on their own, mm -hmm. and they finally did one. They, only, they have limited staff too, um, and they did a compliance check, and um, that's how they got involved, and that's how we found out that they got involved. It was a random letter we got one night, and we went, oh, we should turn this over to Tom, because he's the one who's really been doing this. Mm -hmm. and that's how now Tom and DES have been working on concert to deal with them. He's been, Tom has been going over to check to see if uh, he's actually making progress on the things that he's telling DES he's making progress on. Uh, so they've been working together on that. Okay. So, thank you. So, so I, I still, I think we should probably wait until we have a better handle on what the budget looks like, our existing budget looks like after your conversation, okay. to see if there is money that we can move around. Okay. I mean, we, we cannot ignore the fact that there has been a complaint, mm -hmm. and that it's a serious complaint, um, and that... Um, it's not necessarily so use, use curse there. There are a number of issues. Well, he's allowed to sell three. Okay. I think it's three. Um, go back and look. I believe it's three he's allowed to sell. Per the agreement that he did with the town, the, when he took when he bought it from from Dave's, which was a long time ago now, and I don't have that year in front of me, but when he did purchase that, um, there was a list of conditions, and in, in fact, some of those conditions actually may have gone when when Dave's actually owned it, they may have carried over. You know? Although I doubt it because I think they operated before zoning was in. 
they sold it. I don't know. Obviously, they have to go through the process. But it was like his grandfather used under certain conditions. So, should we table? I know we said a lot to table something, but I think it would be prudent. We don't know what we have for resources. We'll have a better handle on what we have for resources after the next couple of days. And then we can move forward. I think. But, um, I agree with that. I think that we should wait until we know something a little more concrete with it. Okay. Relation to the budget. Okay. Okay. And hopefully we didn't overstep some of what we said in the public session. <laughs> that could have been a non public, but we didn't talk about any strat real strategy, so we should be good. Scotty, something from Yeah, he was going non public. That's that's available. Um yeah, well, we can take a break for a second. That's that's fine. So I, I wanted to yeah, I want to talk to you about uh, what you talked about last week anyway. So why don't you want to make a motion for going non public? I have a motion to go non public. Okay, well, first first motion. Motion. okay uh, roll call, Denise? Yes. Miles? Yes. Mike? Yes, we are non public session to deal with a personnel issue. So we could turn off the minute. Turn your day off. Uh oh. Is it blinking? Can you see? It'll be blinking on your side. I don't see anything. Oh, I get the here. solid green, you get okay, the blinking red. Okay, I got red. the blink. Okay. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is an um, ad hoc town manager committee report. Um, I'm, I don't know if we're prepared to talk about it tonight. I just wanted it on the agenda. Um, I'm glad a lot of more people showed up than uh, usual for our public hearing, but I was actually very encouraged about that whether they support or not, I'm mean, just encouraged that people attend. Um, um, I think we have some thinking to do, but um, I'm not prepared to make a decision tonight, so which direction we go, but uh, if people want to talk about it now, we can, or we can table it to talk about it next. I just didn't want us to lose sight of all the hard work that the three of them put into it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, for myself, I, I feel like <clears throat> she made some great points. Um, I think some time to really digest. And, and you have, uh, or are at the disadvantage of not having not received the initial report, so... I read it on You read it on the website. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, it is available there, so... Yeah. Um, where um, she did interview people in town. That's a lot of what was based on. What are your thoughts? You don't have to have I'm not prepared answer. to make a decision yeah, tonight, I but I think she gave a great presentation tonight and it was very informative. So okay. I think we. Well, why don't we leave it at that? Because I agree with that everything that both of you just said, we will table it then. Until uh, next week or the week after, whenever we want to start talking about it. Mm -hmm. But if we'll have, if we, if we decide to move in any either of those two directions, it will have budget implications. If we do not decide to move in either of those directions, I still believe it will have budget implications because we need to do something. I mean, uh, just as MS4 stuff we talked about tonight, there's more stuff coming down the pipe, so we need to have a frank conversation, I think. So, let's talk about happier things. Um, recreation, maybe not, I don't know. Budget update. You have uh, met with... Uh, we met last week and okay. went over the pros and cons of yep. what happened this year, what can we do better, mm -hmm. talked a little bit about budget. I am actually meeting with um, the, the chairs um, tomorrow okay. and trying to get the budget put together. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, we should have it very soon. Okay. And then we're, uh, it's uh, the snack refunds is still being worked on. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that's being worked on. Miles, do you have any questions about no questions. summer rec? Okay. Uh, cruiser bid, closing date and opening bid time. So we have a cruiser that's gone, is ready to go out to bid. Bob has told us about it. We need to decide as a board a couple of things. One, how we want to post it. We can do the online routes um, through the Municipal Association, through Craigslist. There's a whole host of things that we have done in the past online that do not cost us anything. There is also the, we can put an ad in the newspaper um, to post the bid. Uh, I would suggest for something like this, it will probably cost us more to post in Foster's yeah. 
than we will get for the vehicle right. at this point. It's expensive, so to run that ad, but we're not required to do that. So why didn't um, why didn't we take it for auction? It's a good question. So we we I, we've actually that's one of the first time I when I did what is the first time I asked Bob that very question. So the state auction, um, he has done that in the past, mm -hmm. um, and they have never realized the return on investment that it costs to get over there. It just they usually don't they get more doing it here okay. than they do it there, which I okay. thought was crazy, but I, mean, I believe him. I mean, he said that there, there's a lot of time and energy that it takes to get it over there and mm -hmm. set it up for, to for bit of the they call it the white barn, mm -hmm. the state auction, and it, there's never. The money has never materialized. They just had better luck just selling it. And we only get you know, a few hundred dollars for the, you know, people aren't knocking down the doors for a hundred ninety thousand mile cruiser. So, mm -hmm. you know, it is with no backseat. With no backseat, right? <laughs> exactly. And so, and now, and, and it, with truth in advertising, because it has to be part of the bid. Yeah. This one didn't pass inspection. Mm -hmm. So. In the past, the vehicles we've sold at least have passed inspection, yeah. so might be more, we may not get much at all for it. Scrap. But well, we don't have to accept the bids. We right. can, if when we get them back, if we think that they're not um, a reasonable amount that the, the folks have bid, and that would be part of the packet that says, you know, we have the right to refuse bids, whatever. Um, maybe we, we look into the scrap auction. I mean, that might. Uh, neither of them. Neither of those options are going to get you what anyone mm -hmm. wants to realize out of it. Mm -hmm. So I would just go and advertise through anything that doesn't cost us anything. Are you okay with that too? Yeah. Okay, I will let Caroline know that. So the put next it on our website as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, we'll okay. definitely do that. Right. Yeah, we'll put it on our actual website, and the um, the email blast that goes out yep. will go up that way too. So we need to come up with a date, but when we want to post it. So if we're only going to go with the sort of traditional, I mean, we're not going to go the traditional put of the newspaper route. We we are we're not bound by time. Mm -hmm. uh, we can we can start the bids on Wednesday if we want because Caroline has a, a template that we've used for other vehicles. Okay. It's all ready to go. We just have to um, um, set the date. So we could do the 26th, so this Wednesday, give her a day of buffer at least to uh, to get it ready for tomorrow. Um, and then keep it open for two weeks. See so what, so what happens. We can always extend it, right? You just have to re notice it, yeah. Yeah. So, or we could say we could start on October 1st and go two weeks. That way, it'll just be two weeks straight from October 1st to uh, Oct the bids will close and be opened October 15th. That'll give them two full weeks, and we'll just open the bids at a time. We have to say what time. We suggest in a meeting, we mm -hmm. just say we'll open the bids at seven o'clock mm -hmm. um, on the fifteenth. It just we can do the twenty-sixth. We can keep it open longer. It just seems like it's a nice, it's even. It start on a Monday, end on a Monday. But is it Monday or fifteenth? Is that what you're calling the dates? Yeah. On the fifteenth. Yeah. Monday. Okay. Yeah, because I think uh, that I, I think because if we first. do go the twenty-sixth, remember. October 8th is Columbus Day, mm -hmm. and the town hall is closed. Mm -hmm. We can discuss as to whether or not we, uh, traditionally as a board, we have not met on, on holidays. Columbus Day is one of those holidays where sort of, you know, what, but the town hall is closed, so we haven't met on days, those holidays either, so we need to decide whether or not as a board we're going to meet that day, so. I'm away, so. You're away, mm -hmm. so. That, um, will also contribute to our decision, so that's not that we can't meet um, without a member missing, but anyways. It just wouldn't be as much fun. It certainly would not. <laughs> I don't disagree with that statement. Okay, so the bid, we're going to go out to bid on, let me write this down so I can remember now. Tomorrow we're going to go out to bid on 10-1, close 10-15, Seven p.m. ten fifteen. We'll see what we get. We have to open them in public, okay. um, and we can do it on a separate day. But uh, then we have to meet again. We have to meet again. Uh, to me, it, uh, I don't think it's not going to be a real barn burner. So I, I would suggest we just do it during the meeting. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's settled. That's it. 
Um, SP, SRPC request for transportation planning. Okay. Um, every 10 years, the state, up, well, every year actually, the state updates its 10 year highway plan. Um, this is a, a list of projects that are um, of significance that um, towns are, are, are requesting on state roads. Um, it could be bridge work, it can be a host of things. Um, usually very larger ticket items that the towns are going to pay for themselves and uh, plus they're on state roads. So the one, the number one project we had suggested in the past, and we can reiterate if we want to, is some sort of traffic calming um, on Portland Avenue at the intersection of Rollins, not rather Roberts, Bear, and Portland. Mm -hmm. um, we are probably as close to the bottom of priority that project um, as you can get in the region. I was talking, not that people they don't care about safety, but it's just there are so many other larger projects ahead of us that, that are already on the schedule. Um, that we don't have to give much more specifics than that. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have the actual plan in place as to what. It's just that we want to get on the schedule. Mm -hmm. And so we just got to remind them that we want to stay on the schedule and that that would be our number one project, if it is our number one project. If there are other things that we believe need to get on the 10-year on the, on the plan, we should be thinking about that and we need to let our SRPC know. Um, I think that's the one that's been the most verbal um, within our meetings, and I mean it, it's an ongoing, ongoing issue on that road. I mean, there are people always bring up, "Well, we'd love to have sidewalks yeah. on certain roads, on state roads." Sure. I, in fact, I remember your father-in-law when I was in the mm -hmm. legislature used to call me and write me and say, "Can you?" Put, and I'm like, "Well, I'd love to try to." And I talked to DOT, and they're like, "Yeah, but we'll, we'll put them in the town paying for them." Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then I come here, and they're like, "Yeah." <laughs> so like, okay, sorry. Um, that's what's going to happen. So projects like that, there would there would be town cost sharing for stuff mm -hmm. like that. They don't put in, they don't put in sidewalks anymore. However, not on the state's time anymore. I shouldn't say that. On very rare occasions do they do it. So, um, so let's be thinking about that. If there are projects that um, you've heard folks talk about, when, when is a um, <coughs> uh, let me see. They just emailed us the other day. I I'm going there on Thursday, so I can ask them again. Look, okay. uh, is here somewhere. Um, well, I'll, I'll find it. I don't. Okay. Know, I don't remember the date now. But we have. It's not. It doesn't have to be done. It has to be done today. tonight. Okay. But now I wouldn't even put it on the calendar, or schedule, or agenda. It has to be done tonight because that's the only thing I can think of. Um, Request for assessing reports. Okay. Um, Caroline has brought to our attention, or my attention, not your attention, that um, we, um, we have a contract with Avatar um, for X amount of hours per year of, of services. We have never requested or received, if we have requested, and I don't believe we've requested before, uh, a report uh, of what what we're receiving for our services. Um, so we tell them, we're, let's just say for sake of argument, these are not the numbers, but let's just say we pay for 100 hours mm -hmm. worth of their time. How is that, how is it broken down? Are we actually using the full 100 hours? Are we going, well, we're, we're going over, we know it could be getting a separate bill. Mm -hmm. um, um, and what was it used for, right? I mean, right, exactly, right. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I think that's fine. I think we should be requesting this information, we should know this stuff. So, mm -hmm. I will let her know that she can move forward with with um, yes. uh, reaching out to Avatar to get that information. Now, I may not get it overnight, but at least they know it's um, on there. Um, Caroline has also requested to attend. It says conference. It's a day meeting. Uh, request uh, to attend a conference for free. It doesn't cost the town anything. The registration is free. Down in Massachusetts, and we we'll pay for my. Um, it's on, uh, we're all invited to go if we'd like, but um, we should send someone, it seems like she would be the, the person to go. It's on um, capital planning, I think, is what it's called. Uh, let me go, it's from the 
Edward J. Collins Center for Public Management and the McCormick Graduate School of Public Studies at the University of Massachusetts. They are hosting a capital planning conference for New England municipal officials. Uh, it's being held on November 30th uh, in Stowe, Massachusetts. So she would like permission to go. It's during the work day. That's why she wants permission to go. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's an all-day uh, all conference. Uh, I don't see a problem with it. I think it's probably to our benefit if someone goes. So. I agree. Okay. I agree. All right. So I'll let her know that... Uh, Allow her to go. We do have money already budgeted for um, for mileage for trips like this. So. All right. Oh, okay. Cell tower options. Yes. Miles. I'm talking um, cell tower. So it's Caroline and I spoke to Maria, and I don't have her last name in front of me. Um, from American Tower last week. And I, I mostly wanted to know, because in the email we originally got, it said option one is 35. Right, right. What are the other options? So uh, I, I was mistaken in my thinking that um, it would it, that it would be a 40-year contract. It's an extension of 40 years on top of the remaining 60. Okay. So 66, 56 years. 56 years. Okay. 56 years uh, for $35,000 one-time payment. Um, none of the other terms change. Okay. The other options are, it's basically a, a second option, but with lots of other mini options, is to give them a, um, so uh, we would no longer get an income stream from the cell tower revenue. We would get either a lump sum payment, mm -hmm. um, but we'd have to put the land into um, easement, into perpetuity, <coughs> um, which this woman knows is an issue with municipalities, so she said the American Tower would likely accept 75 years or 99 years, which are things that need to okay. get, but, you know, we're talking 56, 75 years, um, but the one-time lump sum payment would be $402,000. Okay. Um, we would no longer restrict the Stephen income stream. Okay. Another option is to take some of the money up front, okay. 50000 and then get a, a monthly payment for 10 years for X dollars. I think this was in the email that Caroline yeah, sent. But so. there, and then there's also like no lump sum payment, $4,200 for 10 years. And there Just, was another option like a balloon payment at the end of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we took nothing and then in 10 years got $500,000. Okay. So lots of um, options. What I would suggest, so the woman said um, the, the $35,000 signing bonus doesn't remove our other options. So if we decide next year, let's let's do a lump sum. So the things to consider are, do we want to put it into um, a perpetual easement? Okay. Um, or 75, 75 years. years. <clears throat> um, we would be giving up the revenue if they got another carrier on that tower. So the, the money that we would get would is a lump regardless of the money that American Tower earns off that tower. So she alluded to if we were able if we extended the contract for forty years, that makes that tower more attractive to other carriers. Um, that they're trying to drum up business essentially. So that could potentially increase our revenue from that portion. Right. So there's a, there's a lot of levers to pull. I think we should probably take the one-time signing bonus and evaluate. So she kept asking, like, what is, what's the town's immediate need? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, more money would be great, but if we're given up, you know, right. um, you know, in 10 years, someone's going to be upset that we're getting zero. Sure, um, sure. So uh, th that would be my recommendation. Um, and she did say, whatever the option, <coughs> it's 90 to 120 day closing um, for their legal team to, and I assume our legal team would want to. Yes. 
the, the, the one-time signing bonus, um, none of the other terms change. So I don't even know if there would be for legal review, but um, so that's the long and the short of it. So the taking the one-time bonus, yep. that's signing up for 40 more years. Yep. That's all that is. On top of the yep. 16 years we have left. An right. additional 40-year yeah. term to the lease. And then there are other options after the fact that you, you can pursue. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I'm, I'm assuming, and she didn't say this outright, but my assumption is taking $35,000 now will reduce. So we're not going to turn around next month and say, oh, okay, now we'll take $402,000. It is going to come out of one pocket or the other. So it's going to reduce the future payments somewhat. But she did also say that, and I, I didn't, you know, I've been involved with this before, but they keep going up on this one-time payment. She said that they've made offers mm -hmm. for the past however long, um, and this is the, the, the most they can offer. Is that the, the limit of their what they can <coughs> she, she she did say if we had a number in mind that we could approach her with that, and she would bring it to her finance team. Okay. Um, I, I don't I, I don't know I I mean forty I don't know what we want to they might say no. Um, but the intent of, I, I think we were looking into it rather soon so we could get it for this year, yeah. right? And we're not going to be able to. It's going 90 to, it's, days would do it, but um, it would very, be very tight. Yeah. It's tight. Probably so, not. Yeah. Is, I think you have to assume it isn't going to. I would, and it's a fair assumption. I mean, we already sent in the, the form without it, mm -hmm. um, the, the updated. We could still get it in and uh, go into fund balance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Denise. I mean, nothing is going to get to you. <laughs> I sort of doubt they'll be cell towers. I mean, I'm just going to say that. Too. Gonna so that's sort of the thing, right? It's kind of a joke. They say they want an easement for 75 years. Yeah. Do we really believe that that cellular technology is going to be the way that we communicate in 75 years? I don't. I tend to believe probably not, but we never know. I guess. I mean, I think that we should probably go go forward with it, and with you know, with at this bonus. point just this signing bonus thing, and. Um, is it in the folder? Um, Caroline did indicate she would print it out. This is the thing, this is where I sign my life away the notice of intent. <laughs> I'm not going to prison over this MS4 thing, I'll tell you that much. There you go, right. I hear the meal plan's not bad. Yeah. It'll cost me less than what I pay now. <laughs> Anything for us to sign? I think we have to agree, and then the woman. Oh, then they'll, they'll bring the contract forward. Oh. Yeah. yeah, they're probably not going to write the contract. Okay, the so someone needs to make a motion as to what they want to do. I would move that we move forward with a extension of eight five-year terms for thirty-five thousand dollars. Second. Okay. Can't really talk about it anymore. I'm good. Okay. All right. Favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we will let Caroline know that we will go forward with the uh, extension of the lease for 40 years. With a total of 56 total now? That's right. Okay. Oh, will they? <laughs> yeah, apparently 16 years is not in the comfort zone of itself. No, I get it. I mean, they're, they're making a, a large capital yeah. um, investment in all of these towers, so they need to have um, they need to have some stability. I mean, it, it may seem cuckoo to us, but we're not putting multiple thousands of dollars of equipment on these poles, so right. I'm not in that business. So, all right, I'll let her know that. Okay. Town administration standing item board member activities. What do you have going on this week, Denise?
I am meeting with Rick tomorrow night. I'm meeting with Carolyn on Friday afternoon. And that's all I have. I that's it? Right now, right anyway. Now. <laughs> well, um, I'll be working on getting the, the planning board agenda um, finalized. Helping John with that? Yep. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Much appreciated. Um, and I'm going to back to Stratford Regional Planning to have their, um, their quarterly meeting this Thursday. So hmm. get to go to that. It's in the afternoon in Rochester. More time off. Um, I don't think there's anything else going on besides the coming and goings in here, coming in to, mm -hmm. to meet and stuff, which seems to happen almost daily now. Yay, me. Um, yes. Uh, I don't think there's anything. I don't know. I'm sure there's something else I'm working on. And we have our, we all are coming in on um, Saturday at uh, 9 a.m. right here for, um, for a budget workshop. So we had planned on about three hours. Now. We'll see now. Okay. Sorry. I, 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 so many things. No, it's, it's not even part of it. Trying to think of what we've gone over, what we haven't gone over. All right. I don't think there's anything else, any surprises that I can think of <laughs> um, right now. For you. But we will come up with our our schedule some more on Saturday. All right. Building permits. First one I have in the file. It's not in numerical order, sorry. 2018-091. 280 Bear Road, it's an uh, electrical permit, fee is $90, granted, Mr. Clark has reviewed it as well, the date, I don't know how many times, I'm not writing the expiry today, I almost did it, it ex went to expire on 6 30 19. it's not going to expire today. Next is permit 2018-090484 Portland Avenue. Oh, driveway permit. So we had sent a letter uh, before um, uh, the owner um, thought that the driveway was part of the original building permit, and uh, he had to wait for dry weather, which I get. So he, he's done it anyways. He understands. It's a $105 fee. And what number was that port? Oh, 484. Okay. You have a number now, so. Yeah. Now you have a year. Right? So I hope just think you Just in case he has to come back and fix anything else with it. So. Uh, the next is permit 2018-088, 54 Moses Car Road. Uh, alteration. Oh, electrical, sorry. $90 fee reviewed by Mr. Clark. Everyone's updating their electrical.
memorandum from the State of New Hampshire Office of Strategic Initiatives. Could a board member please complete this survey? Um, this is with the Office of Planning, right? The, the OSI Annual that. Survey of Municipal Land Use Regulations. Well, you know what we usually do? We usually give that to the, uh, the to the planning board rep to have the planning board take care of. Okay. I can do that. It does say my name. Does it? Awesome. I didn't just make that up. Right? Actually, the note's on there, right? Okay. You're making Did you sign that in this form? No. I haven't gotten to that yet. He turned it up there. It it's coming next. Is oh. okay. This is the yeah. You want this? So do you want me to? Do you want to hold on to that, Miles? Yes, I will hold on to this. You sure? Or keep it in the folder and put it. Oh, we don't post notes. I know. I forgot my little box. Um. Right, right in the post-it note. The. Uh, save for planning board meeting, maybe. Okay. Maybe John can help us fill it out that night. It, should, it won't take any time if there's like a couple of you doing it. Okay. What, can I see what the number is? Sure. Oh, let's do the scary one next. Okay. So, we need a motion because only one of us gets to sign this. This is the notice of intent for coverage under small, <laughs> small MS4 general permit. I move that the select board chair sign the MS4 application. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. I just do it real quick. I want to know if it's my secretary or not. There's that. Now going back now, the die is cast. I'll second the done. Oh, sorry. Let me so you just want to, what folder are we in? Put it in the um, yeah, the left hand side, okay. so she knows. She's still making. This needs to go in that folder. I was just recording oh, okay. so we went just yeah, for the meeting. This can go in for. Yeah. We just don't want to lose sight of that. To have. Uh, should I hold on to this or put it back in here and she'll? Put it back. We can put it in there. Put it there. So yeah. um, that's right. it'll be safe for. Um, this is not fair to me to this so <laughs> your first time up. So every few weeks we get a bill from our legal counsel. Okay. Um, I've already approved the bill because we got to pay the bill, but just so board members want to see what we've been spending legal dollars on. Yep. We're always spending legal dollars on something. Okay. Every time so they email us and I respond. Actual... Yeah. So let's okay. see. Review email from M. Rolo. Well, I didn't just send him one. He sent me as, us as a board one, so I had to respond. And it cost us 35 bucks. Just so you know. Okay. What's that tell me? Mm -hmm. So, you can so, uh, have to read it just so you can pass it over to these oh, if you okay. want to look at it. Or well, you can take a look at it if you want. We've already had to pay the bill either way, so it's just so you know what's going on. Yep. That's the credit card. This bill. is the credit card bill if people want to review it. Okay. We've already looked is at this, it today, so. this is all the credit card? Oh, the, yeah. In this all the seat department right there, yeah. so. Credit card bill? Okay, look at it. I'm all set. Have you looked at the mic? Oh, what was that? I was here for a while. Mm -hmm. We have a purchase order. Okay. Uh, this happens. I, I can't read what this is. Coding for Accutone. Coding. <laughs> uh, it's a purchase order of 1520 to LHS Associates for coding for the AccuVote uh, machine. All right, that one took me for a loop. Machine for primary. Oh, and it cost us $1,452 to get the machine up and running for primary day. What does that mean? Is that every election? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that budgeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, under what? So we have, so you need to make the motion. Take a moment. So, on it. <coughs> I move a 1520 purchase order to LHS Associates for 1452 for the AccuVote. A machine coding. Okay. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of purchase order 1520 say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Yep, no, it's budget. Okay. Okay. Miles, are you aware that you have to be here in Washington? Yeah. I, was, I was made aware of that the day I got sworn in. <laughs> So that oh, we told you. Yeah, because I didn't know until election day. 
This is a magazine from the the office of the governor, okay. New Hampshire's School Safety Preparedness Task Force, um, and she's Caroline's written a note for police and fire. Yeah, let them have it. Okay. School board already got their own copy. Oh, okay. This is a report that the governor um, assembled a commission to look at school safety. I think the one thing they should look at was. Yep. So you're done with your folder? I am. Are we done with all the folders? Do we have any mystery folders I'm not remembering? I know. Oops, awesome. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wow. sorry. Take it back in the office. All right. So, I need to clean that folder up. Last but certainly not least, community input. I have a question. Sure. Really cool. uh, are the street lights the town or the utility company that they're posted on to? One more time, say. Street lights. What about them? Are they the town's responsibility or the utility's responsibility? Both. Okay. It is our responsibility to let the um, utility know that they're burnt out. If they're burnt out, then they replace the bulbs. And we okay. pay for them to replace the bulbs. Well, there was the one at the end of Washington Street and Church was out, but there was a truck there today. I don't know if they were already notified. It, uh, Washington and Church. I'll see if it was on the list. Um, so what happens typically, say, just so you know? Yeah. If someone like yourself comes in or calls or whatever, emails and tells us that the street lights out. We report it, and months go by. I mean, literally months, sometimes six months, sometimes almost a year goes by before they actually fix them, mm -hmm. just so you know. It's not that we don't. We actually report it right away because it could be a public safety issue. So Washington and where Church? Yep. It's along the railroad tracks. Yeah, yeah, no, so that would be something we would want um, lit. So is it on, is it, so when you go home tonight, I will check it should be it. on. Right. It, in theory, uh, if it's working. So if it's, if it is, can you just send me an email so I don't bother yep. reporting it again? Perfect. Sounds good. But if not, I'll, um, what happens every Tuesday morning, or as close to the morning as possible, I um, either come in or I call Caroline and I go through the agenda. So I won't tell her about it until tomorrow morning anyway, so um, that we need to add it to the list of things we need to report. So. Thank you for that. They were, they were on, Eversource and a, and a policeman was on Rollins Road doing something with street lights today. Oh good, because there was a number there that were burnt out too, so maybe they are finally replacing them, which would be good. So it's a double-edged sword, right? It's good that they're being replaced, but then we'll get the bill for how much it costs to replace them. So it's not cheap. So There has been a suggestion, just so you know, I don't want to belabor really the point, we, we all want to go home, but um, it's been suggested to us a couple of times, actually, that if we switch to LED lights, I mean, there's a, a capital investment to begin with, but within, I think it was two years, it's like a really quick return on investment. You make your money back, so I mean, it might be something that I don't know what I can do with this year, but something the town needs to look into moving forward. I guess the guy came to us I don't know, a couple years ago, like something was two years. two years ago now. So yeah, he's like, "Oh, Portsmouth just did it." I'm like, "Well, Portsmouth's got a lot more money than we had to have. But anyways, but yes, it's it's so. Thank you for that. Thing. Would that be and able to use the sound bonus for that? Yeah, that's going to cost more than that. Like, but would it yes. be beneficial to put that on like? capital improvement plan. It may be, yes. We hadn't done it yet, but it may be. It may be. There's always these things that fall through the cracks, so it may be, maybe not. I don't know. But anyone else? Anyone? Charlie? Mm -hmm. Do the okay. Yeah? No? Okay. okay. All right. Well, one will not be heard from. Well, two out of three ain't bad. Uh, so 904, we're going to adjourn. Like and send. All right. Thank you all. Back to